Take two, five from now. Five, four. Dr. Yankovic, this is an uh, historic conference, and uh, many feel that it may be a turning point in the future of space in many ways. First of all, I know that the conference is not yet finished, but what is your assessment of it thus far? Uh, could you say, uh, if, if I may I ask you very generally, has it or is it being a success, whatever quite I mean by that? Well, calling it a success at this, sta at this stage would be a little premature, but if you consider the number of people who've come here, if you consider the number of successful demonstrations what space technologies can achieve in our age and day, uh, if you consider the tremendous response we had from the media and from many other sources, I think it's been a qualified success up to now. But uh, we are a little bit more ambitious than that. Uh, we just uh, we are not satisfied with uh, the simple uh, uh, recordings of statements at the conference. Uh, we believe that this should be a real breakthrough uh, in international cooperation to spread the benefits of space, which are now within the, re the reach of everybody. And uh, there are several messages we want to convey. Uh, one message is that here is a new tool for mankind to be used by everybody, not a luxury tool. Uh, there's now something one could call the appropriate technology of space, uh, which doesn't carry the luxury tag of the early uh, uh, space uh, achievements, but something within the reach of poor countries and people with limited means. And uh, we want to convey uh, uh, another message namely that uh, space is the medium which per se needs a great deal of international cooperation uh, but cooperation of course doesn't come about by itself it needs confidence uh, it needs a great deal of effort uh, and it needs dedicated people and uh, here in vienna i believe we have a lot of dedicated people uh, who can uh, prove that such cooperation is possible who've been knowing each other and we who get to know each other at this conference uh, in surroundings which we have tried to make as pleasant and as congenial as possible. Uh, and there's a third message uh, which should be relayed from Vienna uh, as forcefully as can be, uh, namely that if there is a medium which needs uh, peace uh, and the total absence of violence, it's space. And uh, the last 25 years of space have seen uh, uh, this absence of violence, and we hope we can keep it that way. Are you uh, optimistic that you can? I mean, the, right now there has been an uh, expression of concern about the uh, militarization or weaponization of space, and uh, there has been no actual guarantee or assertion, to my knowledge, by either of the superpowers that they will under no circumstances become involved in such directions. Is this a, a source of great concern? I mean, does this threaten the whole uh, philosophy of the peaceful uses of outer space? It certainly threatens the philosophy of outer space, which was built on the notion of peaceful uses, meaning that whatever activity is conducted in outer space should be conducted on the basis of mutual trust, namely that whatever is put into space uh, is uh, a kind of sanctuary. We have considered space a sanctuary, perhaps the last sanctuary, and uh, whatever was up there was inviolable. Uh, partly by treaty. The 1967 uh, Outer Space Treaty has already uh, outlawed certain amount of weapons, nuclear weapons, weapons of mass destructions, and the big powers have accepted that. Now we want to persuade them, without in the least way trying to get into the uh, course of their legitimate interests, to persuade them uh, to keep it that way. And if there are legitimate interests to be defended in space, to defend it by peaceful means, by treaties, by conventions, and by just building uh, a mutual climate of trust. And I think if this conference is successful, uh, if it produces good results, it can be a very persuasive message in this direction. What do you think the, uh, the tendency of, of the implications of the technology are in terms of whether it is uh, democratizing or whether in fact it is to some extent elitist? For example, there has been some uh, concern expressed by some of the third world nations that the hardware, the machinery, the technology, all the, uh, the uh, knowledge that comes from the research and the development is overwhelmingly in the hands of those minority of developed nations and that uh, they increasingly are, are the controllers of 
space. Uh, do you think that this is, this is a, a legitimate concern and do you see this, this a continuing direction or do you think this will change? This uh, was certainly true in the early years of the space age when indeed uh, there was virtually no technology uh, outside a few highly industrialized uh, developed countries. Now, in the first place, there are developing countries, to an increasing degree, who have their own space technology. India, Brazil, Indonesia, uh, one could name a few others. Uh, secondly, there have been uh, interesting and successful ways of transferring the technology, which has become more simple and more accessible financially. Uh, you can now buy uh, cheap uh, space goods, cheap space products for your own use at uh, relatively little cost. And uh, I would say that the picture is much more optimistic with one exception, research and development. In research and development there's still a big lag. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, certain sectors, telecommunications, uh, remote sensing are concerned, I think that the technological gap uh, is getting actually smaller. Uh, however, we still need a fantastic effort uh, to decrease it even more, uh, and this conference has a role in that. And I think space has to develop the innovative ways of technical assistance. You do not need gigantic new bureaucracies and new organizations and uh, new bureaucrats, uh, but rather, and I think this is a tendency you can find in this uh, in the conference document, uh, more human resources, uh, more people who can exploit uh, the results of space technology which are already on hand, like for instance satellite images. There are millions of satellite images about every conceivable corner of the world, but many, very few countries have the experts to read these images. But it's a simple process. You don't need sophisticated technology. You need one or two good experts. So I would say that space technology is now uh, far more democratized, a far more generalized the way uh, of uh, uh, assuring uh, economic and social progress than it was 25 years ago. Finally, may I ask how you react to the suggestion that perhaps um, um, both observation technology may itself become a, an important instrument for peace. Uh, the French initiative, for example, has proposed a United Nations uh, observer satellite to monitor disarmament treaties and so on. Do you think that this is uh, likely to uh, develop? Do you think that this has uh, practical applications? Well, in the first place, uh, the Earth observation is already now in a tremendously stabilizing factor. Uh, even if these activities are carried out by purely national means, uh, it gives uh, uh, adversaries or potential adversaries uh, a sense of security because they know roughly and perhaps uh, quite precisely uh, what, this take, what the strength of the, of the other side is. So this is a complete, uh, this is a distinctive advantage. And uh, if of course it should be possible to uh, place this activity on an international basis as the uh, French proposal suggests, uh, uh, it would put uh, a legal framework uh, of a very useful nature and uh, it would show again that uh, uh, the basic nature of uh, space technology is uh, peaceful and in the direction of uh, maintaining peace. Has there been any specific resistance this, to this idea from either of the uh, superpowers? I wouldn't call it resistance, I would rather call it lack of enthusiasm. Uh, because uh, it is easy to understand that if you hold the technology, uh, if you hold something into your hands, you're reluctant to give it up unless there's some pressure. Uh, but this doesn't mean that one has to be pessimistic for the whole of the future. The time may come, the time may come when uh, perhaps uh, it may be more appropriate to conduct some of these activities at the beginning on an international basis. Thank you very much for talking with us, Dr. Yankovic. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.